Today, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you, for the second time, the Lunar Ladies from Gardner Middle School and Oregon City High School. I'm Palicia. I go to Oregon City High School and I'm in 10th grade. I'm the drone pilot. I'm Lily and I'm in 9th grade at Oregon City High School and I'm the communication officer. I'm Ariana and I'm in 9th grade in Oregon City High School and I'm the science officer. I'm Sophia and I'm in 7th grade at Gardner Middle School and I'm the lead programmer. Hi, I'm PJ Misley and I'm in 9th grade at Oregon City High School and I am the mission commander. This cohort of girls have been working closely together for the past two years under the direction of their coach and mentor, Tom Misley. Last year, this all-girl team won first place in Oregon with the Mission to Mars Challenge, sponsored by NASA. This year, they entered the competition and again took first place in Oregon. Even though this is not a sponsored, organized activity of the Oregon City School District, I am very pleased to say that some of these girls got their first taste of STEM while taking my Lego Robotics classes as early as third graders. Join me now as we learn more about their winning project. This challenge is about flying a rover to Mars and landing the rover and going to collect samples around Mars. At the start of the challenge, a simulated spacecraft, which is the drone, goes to Mars and lands a lander. But before it can land the lander, it has to circle around Mars because it has not yet received its communication message. But now that she has circled the planet once, I can start building the satellite dish. Once the communication dish is built and the message is sent, the drone then descends onto Mars and lands the lander. After that, the rover can start going out to collect the samples. Now that she's landed the drone, I can set the rover on the map. Now I'll start the first program. Once it collects the first sample, Ariana can test the soil samples for methane. She's I'm calibrating the methane detector. There we go. That's good. This sample is the sample that has the methane. Once it hits the second sample, she can look for bugs through our microscope. I'll now be checking these two samples for macroinvertebrates. This is the sample with the macroinvertebrates. Our robot will weave through the mountain obstacles and it will finish collecting all the samples. Once it reaches where we drop the samples off at, instead of just dropping them all off and risking pulling some back, we take off our whole attachment and leave it on the mat with the samples at its destination. Our robot then turns and sticks the moisture sensor into our soil box to finish off the mission. Once we finish testing the soil sample, Polita flies the mini drone out to the crater, and once the crater is in view of the drone, I take a picture on the phone of it. Oh. Yeah. Part of the reason why NASA Space Grant put together this National Student Challenge was so that they could encourage students to find the connection between what they are doing every day in their classroom and in their lives with the real NASA missions, past, current, and future. And that can be reflected in all the work that they have done in their design of their robot, in the design of the dish, in their flying, in their patch, and completion of all the other mission objectives. We hope that this is something that can continue. So, for 2021, we hope to see many students join us again to try to find a way to connect with NASA through our Roads on Asteroids National Student Challenge. We hope it is just as fun as this one was.